but our camera shuts down. So anyway, we had to. Um, so, so those are the two big tracks. And most people, even trans people and intersex people, are located somewhere between or on, you know, the, around the tracks. That's how we're set up biologically, even with, you know, variation. And then the example Lance likes to give, which is the person who doesn't fe who feels like their arm doesn't belong to him, so they want to get it amputated. That doesn't have fucking anything to do with either of the two genders or sexes. It's just it's this this kink or whatever perversion or or just weirdness. Like the guy there's there's this old show that you know that like the guy who likes having sexual intercourse with cars. Um, or the woman who likes eating mattresses. Uh, Carol found, my wife found that show and was watching it. And, you know, th those things don't I have hope, anything. I hope it doesn't eat your mattress. <laughs> <laughs> There's extra protein there. Um, so anyway, so the, you know, variations that have people preferring not the gender they were born as. Um, is 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 a is a reasonable variation. The person who wants to cut off their arm doesn't have anything to, that doesn't have to, anything to do with with gender or anything. It's 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 and it's not a good example for what's going on with people who find themselves misgendered. The end. Now, should I talk about time travel well, for Lance, half a second? Or Lance respond? can respond. Yeah. Um, I think that what my colleague Rick said was so incoherent and meaningless that I can't respond. But um, I will say an insight that I had this week about uh, transgenderism. And this is actually, uh, I arrived at this at the same time as Douglas Murray. Uh, I recommend his book, it's called The Madness of Crowds. And Douglas Murray is talking about uh, political correctness, including transgenderism. And one of the things he says is that the political correctness at its core is Marxism. And the reason is this. In, 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 in the time uh, uh, that Marx was writing, his goal was to turn one class against the other class, the poor against the rich, because that way he could destroy Western civilization and bring about a socialist utopia. And it turned out that in World War I, people fought for their countries regardless of class. And the, uh, early, the early communists realized that they couldn't turn the classes against each other in uh, anywhere other than Russia. So what the modern communists are trying to do is to turn genders and races and sexual preferences against each other. So that's why you've got so much agitation for women's rights, the rights of minorities, even though times have never been better for men and women uh, and minorities, uh, the, the communists, the modern socialists, are trying to tell us that times have never been worse. So if you ask the average young person today, they think that they're being oppressed by the patriarchy. And all that is to build up to the point they, they finally ask uh, Douglas Murray, so what, what's the point? Why, why, why have political correctness? And the first reason is to, get the, is to get people to hate each other so that there'll be more division and, and more of a wish to destroy society and build it back up again as a, uh, a communist society. But also, um, it is a technique of controlling people. So the Democrats can't win at the ballot box so far. They're getting better, but they, they, they don't like to depend on democracy. And so what they're doing is they're starting to control people even though they're not in office. So 
for example, there are a million things that everyone is aware of you can't say anymore. Uh, things that are, will offend people, etc., etc. Now, having said all that, I'll get to my point on transgenderism. So, Douglas Murray was asked, why is it Is that, he friends with Jordan Peterson? Uh, I believe they're friends. The, so he asked him, why is it that uh, such a fuss is being made over transgenderism when there's such a tiny, tiny little percentage of the population. And Murray said this, because if you can get people to believe things that are insane, then you can control them. For example, his example is this. If a big six foot five, 250 pound man with a beard insists that you call him a woman, and you have to, even uh, because if you don't call him a woman, you lose your job, or you can't, uh, or you lose your clients, or you get uh, prosecuted by the government. Um, that is basically saying we can get you to believe something at t that is crazy. Let me put it this way: if I get you to vote for the Republicans, then I can use persuasion. But if I can get you to say that a man is a woman, then I can get you to say anything I want. So it, it is a way of controlling people. It's a way of saying, you will believe whatever I tell you. Now, I have more to say. There was a period in Russian history called the Time of Troubles. And in the Time of Troubles, the Russians were engaged in civil war with one another because they couldn't find a new czar. And finally, one faction took over and said, you know what, we're just going to say that we're in charge and this chair, this chair is the czar. So they gathered all the people together and, and they said, we announce that the, the czar is this chair. And they said, does anybody have any, any comments? And someone from the crowd shouted up, no, that's a chair. So they immediately hustled him off in front of everybody and chopped his tongue out. And from that moment forward, the, the chair was the czar. So that's what I'm saying the Democrats, the socialists, the communists, they're all the same now, are trying to do. They're trying to get us to believe that crazy things are real. Now, they've already succeeded with Rick. If you are six foot five with a beard, 275, and you're a man, you have a penis, but you want to identify as a woman, then Rick will say you're a woman. I myself it doesn't was, cost me anything. I, yeah, you think it, it does it, cost it me. It costs your sanity. It costs your dignity. So in your case, it costs your sanity because you really believe it. I myself, Here's what I, believe. I myself do not believe they're women, and I will not be coerced by the communists into telling people that they're women. All right, it's ridiculous to argue that transism equals communism. Let me boil down my argument, because you said it was incoherent. The deal is, I believe that, that human and animal biology, and some plant biology, is arranged around two main sexes, male or female. But there are going to be variations. And the variations include trans people. And that's an issue of, of gender orientation. And there are some people who, prob who identify as neither gender. Again, but, the, but still, it's, it's within the framework of gender, of two sexes. The deal where you don't want people to mess with their penises and vaginas surgically because it's the same as chopping your arm off. Chopping your arm off is not in the same framework as sex or gender. Okay, 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 okay now, now let me say some stuff. Um, you like to say that the Democrats have people thinking that, that shit is worse than ever when it's actually better than ever, which, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't buy a lot of that in that income inequality is currently at a very high level compared to throughout history. It's, it's at a level it hasn't been in 
80 years or 100 years, 120 years. Um, but there's, at the same time, there's never been a better time to be poor in America. Because if you're poor in 1932, you know, you're standing in bread lines. You're, you're, you don't have shoes, or you have shoes that are stuffed with newspaper because uh, the soles have worn out. And you're trying to come up with a dime to go to the movies. If you're poor in America today, you probably still have a flat screen TV that's 45 inches or more. And you can probably hit McDonald's every once in a while to have fucking delicious McDonald's food. You know, the best fries in America. Or Popeye's, which has the best fucking boneless chicken wings in America. From 6 5 for 338. Though they often miscount and give you six for the price of five. So that's thing one, is, yeah, in, income inequality is a thing that Democrats want people to be a little pissed off about, but not so fucking pissed off. Um, climate change is another thing. But in terms of, you know, sexuality and all that shit, like, there's never been a better time to get laid in America. And I'll make this argument. Now, people are getting laid less because so much other shit, including video games, food, Streaming TV, everything is so fucking awesome that you know, social media, that, that there are so many other things to do besides fuck that people are doing less fucking. Which is, you know, that's not a thing against fucking, it's just a thing about how great shit is. Um, and also, sex isn't rationed, rationed, as it was, like it was all the way up through the 70s. When you and I were growing up, the 70s were the most sexual decade in the last 150 years. Can we agree on that? Yes. Okay. But you could only get laid if you were kind of cool. I couldn't get laid. I was not cool at all. I didn't get laid until I was three months short of my 20th birthday. Lance, who was cooler than me and went to fucking Palisades High, which was just fucking coolness <laughs> persona, Lance got laid in high school. I've had a full life. He has. You know, my, my free range years were only six years where I was able to, to like go out and occasionally like go home with somebody. Those, that only lasted from just before the age of 20 to 26 when I met my future wife. And that's, that's not a long time. Anyway, um, only cool people could get, for the most part, could get laid in the 70s. Yeah, your wife is beautiful. Yeah, so it was, I mean, I, I got a good deal. But um, now, anybody can fucking get laid. I mean, I see people, I see couples out in public, and I'm, I'm like, fuck you, young couple, who neither of whom is cool, both of whom have ridiculous glasses and have, like, sloppy fucking clothes and, you know, would never make a sports team just like I barely ever made a sports team. It's like, and, and are obviously just fucking every once in a while when they're not on social media or playing video games. It's like, and fucking people of different races can do it. People with dicks who say they're women can have, have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and it's no big deal. And it, it's a parad like paradise of people having sex when, when they want to rather than like me who, you know, I start. I was so nerdy. If you're nerdy, you start beating off early because you don't have sports to distract you. So I had a sex des. I was beating off for ten years before I lost my virginity, and it's not like that today. You know, you've, you've got plenty of shit to distract you, so you're not miserable even if you are a virgin. And you can go on social media and find your peers who might want to, you know, engage in, you know some kind of sex or pre-sex play with you. The end. All right, I want to respond to a couple of things. The first is that um, Rick is not a scientist. I know he does Science Corner every week, but the truth is he doesn't believe in science. And Which part? You're going to tell me. I'm going to tell you. Yeah, <laughs> you guessed it. You see, it turns out that there are two sexes. There's male and female because there's X and Y chromosomes. And everything else that Rick just talked about is uh, the product of people's imagination, okay? You're either male or you're female, 
if you can't figure it out, you're crazy. All right? So uh, in, in nature, there's only males and females. The, the second thing I wanted to say, because you, you ran on now. Oh, I yeah, that's fine, that's fine. But Is this. And th this is kind of a nice thing. I, I rarely get a chance to say anything nice, but it's true. Um, if I had my choice between having sex with, I don't know, 200 girls and being single into my late 50s, or having sex with one woman and being married my whole life, I would rather have been married to the love of my life when I was 20 and only been with her. Because when you're with, in the end, the amount of variety and uh, excitement of different partners does not compensate for the lack of building a, a true relationship and a family with another person. So I'm all for people not having a lot of sexual experience and finding the right person and staying with them. Having said that, I will say this. You always, when it comes to sexuality, and particularly I believe men, they always wonder about the other side. Like even what I just said may not be true. Maybe it's better to have 300 lovers and die single at the age of 90, never having been married. But I would say this, whatever situation you're in, after three months of being in love, you're gonna start envying somebody else in some other situation. There is a honeymoon period. And they've actually scientifically analyzed this. They've found that what we do is we fall in love we become obsessed with that one person, you can relax, and then after a few months, the electricity will wear down. It happens with, I guess, everyone. And then you'll start wondering if, you know, even if you get the girl of your dreams with red hair, you start thinking to yourself, you know, there's a brunette next door, and uh, I wonder how that would be. So my advice to the young men watching this video is if you've got something that's pretty good, just calm the fuck down. Because you'll never, you no, know, it is the nature of the male libido to always be wondering about if there's some other situation which might be fun too. Just calm the fuck down uh, because You'll never be satisfied. You'll never be completely satisfied. After the four months of intense, obsessive love, you'll start, your eye will start roving. And at that point, you have to say to yourself, you, start, you have to start thinking with your head instead of with your dick. And your, head, your dick will always tell you, I want a new adventure, or I didn't get the adventure I should have had. If, if you're an older man like I am, you start thinking about the adventures you missed, all right? If, and and that's, that's your dick thinking. Your brain has to be in charge of this operation. And your brain has to say, you know what? I like what I have. It works. I'm going to shut down the other part of my mind. And that's what you do. All right. Go all right, on. so a couple things. I'll mostly agree with that. Though don't undersell yourself. Back in, I think, 1983, I broke up with my most serious girlfriend to date because we saw the movie Splash, and I observed that the Daryl Hannah character was not a, was not mean to the Tom Hanks character the way my girlfriend was mean to me, and I'm like, I deserve better than this. Based because you know because of a mermaid, um, that's thing one. But thing two is, I'll agree with Lance that uh, most guys they make the mistake of 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 thinking too of not thinking well enough about the person they're with, and you can call this regression to the mean or the girlfriend fallacy. 
And the deal is that a guy looks at himself, a bro, say, and says, I'm a seven or an eight. Because um, that's how bros, bros, all bros know the number, the one to 10 scale. Um, and so I deserve an eight. And that's, there's a mistake could creep in there because, you know, the whole numbering thing is, is kind of fucked up anyway. But even if there were an objective scale and the guy's a 7.7 7 and, you know, you know, he deserves an 8, the guy is going to make the mistake that an 8 is a girl who's an 8 in kindness, an 8 in looks, an 8 in horniness, an 8 in intelligence, um, an 8 in tolerance. And the deal is that a lot of that, sh you know, when you make a list of all the characteristics you want, or actually the list will make itself as you get in a relationship with somebody and you start noticing the things that bug you, some of these characteristics are inversely correlated with each other. That is, if somebody's an eight on one scale, um, say looks, that might be uncorrelated with or inversely correlated with kindness. Um, though not in a, um, so you, you can't, so somebody who's an eight across the board is not an eight overall. They are a, a 9.9 .9 because they're much rarer than somebody who's an eight in some things and a five or a four in other things. So you know, about when you're deciding whether or not you're with the person, you know, the, I mean, you can hope that love will overcome the need to, to uh, evaluate your person characteristic by characteristic, but if it doesn't, then don't make the mistake of demanding somebody be above a certain level in every possible way, because that's an impossible person. All right. I, wait, let, I got more to say. All right. So first of all, when I, here's another mistake that guys make, okay? The second you get into a relationship, all of a sudden, girls like you better. No idea why this is, you can speculate, but um, what happens is, uh, you suddenly become more attractive to other girls. And you think that if you dump the girl you're with, that that's gonna ha continue. Not true, because Here's what will happen. You get involved with a woman, suddenly women mysteriously, by some mystical curse that they have, they're, they're all evil. And so they believe suddenly that now that you're in a relationship, the, the message goes out to the female evil consciousness, oh, this guy's in a relationship. He's more attractive. And suddenly the women will be more attracted to you because you're in a relationship. Then you dump the girl you're with because you think, hey, I'm hot stuff, and you're single again. And now you're just a horny bastard that they're going to reject. You're spiky with need, with yeah, horniness. Yeah, yeah, and suddenly they don't like you anymore. Oh, speaking of Even no, Bryce, no, no, even no. Bryce admits, speaking wait, 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 you're interrupting me. I'm, okay. I'm giving wisdom here. All right. So the thing is, don't think just because you're sexy now to other women that it's going to continue when you're alone again. That's the first thing. The second thing is this. I've never liked the idea of women in the military. And I was talking to a female Marine and she told me that she agreed with me. And she said, you know, if there's a hundred male soldiers in the camp, and one of them is married, the female Marines will all try to seduce the one guy that's married. Okay? So this is true. It's actually, it, I've suspected it, but it's true. There's something about, uh, something about what I just said. Being in a relationship makes you sexier. Also, but also, the, the strange competitive thing where the females have to 
have to fight to try to take that one guy that's with that's that's in a relationship. Also, that one married marine is less sexually harassing than the, than the 99 other male marine. Yeah, well, Rick always has to take the women's side. All right, so that's the first thing I was going to say. Wait, let me say one Rice. thing. That's, yeah. I mean, right. it's something kind of unrelated. Yeah, right. What did you guys. want to say? Well, I was thinking we're in this kind of crazy-ass sexual free-for-all, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't something similar, like, my question is, what do you think is coming next? Because wasn't this, like, the li aren't we the new libertines? Or, the, or like, are we hitting, a, is it going to expand? Or is it going to well, rebound? And well, it's the end of the world in a lot of ways. Yeah. The, the technology, including medical technology, is going, Lance thinks it's, it's, it's the end of the world in a, in a terrible way, and that, you know, it's, that without strong male and female niches, that, that it's the end of it, that we turn into ancient Babylon where everybody was fucking everything else. And, um, um, and I think that a lot of traditional structures are going to get eroded. Um, and, you know, some new structures will maybe come into play, like, like right now, like, like, um, when you see like, not couples but trios or four-way, you know, I don't know what you call them, but quads or something. Right now they're kind of cheesy and they're they're kind of weirdos doing it. In the future, what polyamorous people? So, um, in the future, um, that will become it won't become a majority thing. It will become more prevalent and it won't be as cheesy as it is now. Isn't that just what like Mormons do? Like I mean, you know, as long as you know society is set up or evolves to to support. I mean, right now society mostly supports married couples, mm -hmm. um, but and which me along with the support you get from society, you also get expectations of decency within the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and once society evolves to the point that you can have stability, if that's what you want, and decency within uh, other arrangements, if possible, because we'll learn what's, what works and what doesn't, mm -hmm. um, those social and romantic structures will, you know, that's what's going to happen, for good or for ill, I think. Look at history. One of the funny things about history is that uh, there were cycles in terms of sexual behavior. So uh, I'll give you an example. Um, the Victorian era followed an era of sexual uh, openness. Um, for example, uh, the time of the uh, the, the colonial period, people were more openly uh, having sex uh, out of wedlock and that sort of thing than they did 80 years later. Um, and uh, for example, in uh, certain periods in England, it was not uh, it, 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 it was not customary to get married till you were in your 30s. Um, there have been times in uh, in our country, in every country, where where people go through wild swings, and uh, I think what happens is people go as far as they can to one e one end and see that there that there's uh, that that's not working, and then they retract. Uh, part of the reason that they had done that in the past, though, was because um, if you were having wild promiscuous sex, there was the possibility of disease and the pregnancy. The probability of disease. And pregnancy. So now what we've done is by eliminating, uh, by being able to control for disease and pregnancy, We've changed the uh, 
we've changed what's going on sexually. Uh, what 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 we've changed the need to control it. Right now, my great fear, uh, which is a little more something you can do something about, is I find that the young men are afraid of women. And uh, I think that they've taken it very much to heart, the political correctness, the fear of being sued, the fear of uh, offending a woman, uh, and the women are being turned against men. They're being taught by the Democrats to hate men. So my opinion, my great fear is that the, the young people today will uh, be driven crazy in the sense that they won't know whether they're male or female, they won't know if they're gay or straight, and the men in particular will be afraid of women who will be encouraged by the Democrats to be lesbian. Okay, because a, a lesbian is an angry minority group that will vote Democrat reliably. Whereas they found that married women are more likely to vote Republican. It's a great myth that, uh, that women vote Democrat more. It, it's true that in general they vote Democrat more than, than men do, but it's the single women that vote Democrat. The, the married women vote Republican. So I believe there are forces at work. I don't think it's an accident that the sexes are being turned against each other. Uh, and I think that my hope for the future is that Trump wins again, that we take back the House, that we begin to control social media uh, and the brainwashing in, in our schools, and we turn people back to sanity, and that in the future, uh, the, the chaos and uh, uh, mischief of the Democrats uh, can be stopped. All right, a couple things. One is, in the most shocking news of the day, even more shocking than impeachment, it came out, but in the 80s. Do you need to go, by the way? Um, John Cryer, who was the, the chief, spiky, sexually needy character of the 80s, hooked up with Demi, Demi Moore. John Cryer, really? Ducky Boy. Yes, it's in, she just came out with her autobiography, and she, huh. they, they hooked up. So, also in the seventies, who was afraid of women or girls was me, and was uh, were my friends. We were all afraid of women, and you know what makes you unafraid of women is social media today. You just get on social media, you learn how to interact with people, um, and. Social media is the great wall taker downer. You learn how to behave decently, um, and that plus horniness means that people will continue to hook up. Um, and also, one more thing, you said I'm not a scientist because I don't realize that there are two genders, one is XY genetically and one is XX. Yeah, that's true 98.3% of the time. 1.7% of the time, people are intersex. There's so, a glitch happened. If you want to call it a glitch, though you could also call it God's plan because God made 5 million intersex people in this country. Um, and those people have something going on biologically, not psychologically, that means that they have characteristics of both sexes. It could be something like having being double XY or being X double Y or there are people who are triple XY, um, uh, and, or people like the, the athlete uh, Castor Semenya, who I believe is just straight up XY, but is a woman with super high levels of testosterone to the point that she has been suspended from racing because she's too jacked. Um, but all natural variation there. And uh, so... But that doesn't matter, Rick, because I'm still not going to say someone with an X and a Y is a woman. I refuse. Someone with an X and a Y is a man. Now, I just wanted to tell the people watching this, 
Okay, because a lot of the times we don't give you guys hope. I'm going to give you hope, okay? If you are a guy and you're not able to have sex and it, it, you're really upset, I have some advice. And this is advice that, that you really need to hear and it will be helpful. Do what you can to improve your appearance. So, if you're a, a scrawny little guy, work out two hours a day. If you have bad skin, see a dermatologist. Get, uh, if, if, you, if you have weird hair, it, it, look at your hair and your facial hair and your clothing and compare it to what you see in magazines and try to dress and do your hair the way stylish people do. So improve your, 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 your style, build up your body, get braces, uh, get, get, uh, get your skin fixed. If you have a physical deformity, uh, you know, get plastic surgery. Don't don't be shy, because the only the only person that, because if you improve your appearance, you do the best you can with what you've got. That's the best thing you can do to get more uh, popular with women, and that's something you can control when you're only 19. Also, don't be shitty inside. Don't. I agree with everything Len said, but also, like, be a mensch, because that'll not only, not, not only because it's the decent thing to do, but it also means that your relationships with people of all types, not just the ones you're trying to fuck. What's a mensch? A, a, a decent person. It, it, it's Yiddish for man. And by that kind of definition, a man isn't a motherfucking asshole. Like, I've, I've run into people who, who, who get real, and it's the whole incel thing. Incels who, who despair of ever getting a girlfriend revel in their dickishness. Don't fucking do that. Um, and I'll tell you, like, you live, in terms of cosmetic surgery, my chin, I'm not happy with how strong my chin is. It's, it's not the, it could be stronger. I tried to get plastic surgery um, in 1978, I could, you, when you could buy a chin for $300, you go to the surgeon, he slices right here, he stuffs in a little butt-shaped piece of silicon, and all of a sudden you have a chin. I, was, I had an appointment to do that, and then my mom found out, and she got on the phone with the plastic surgeon because we were in a little town, everybody knew everybody else, and my mom said she wouldn't be friends with the surgeon anymore if he operated on me. And that was the end of my chin. And then I had to fucking grow a hair chin, and I've had this fucking beard for, for fucking forever. Occasionally I'll shave it, and it's shocking. Like, you know, I look 20 years younger, but part of the looking younger is like not having as strong a face as I do with a beard. So. All right, are we? Oh, How about time for time? Last, last thing. thing? All right, last thing uh, in our last show. Lance's beloved American president. Just looks fucking good. He hasn't changed what I think he's looking better. What I think we, we were talking about that on the way over here. Great cop. What do you? I mean, All right, I'll, I'll start then. Okay. I mean, he, it's not like he looks. You know, the guy is seventy-three, seventy-four. You know, he, he's he's kind of. You know, he he says he he's proud of not exercising. He says he gets all the exercise he needs from yelling. Though he does play golf. But anyway, he's. He, I mean, he's not. He 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 looks kind of rough, but I, I agree with your point that it's hard to tell. He doesn't seem to be aging as much as other presidents have in office. For one thing, he probably colors his hair. Or you know, and for another thing is he makes a lot of crazy expressions. If you compare the range of expressions Trump has to the range of expressions that Obama showed. When he was in office, Obama would look determined, Obama would look serious, Obama would smile, but Obama didn't, um, you know, do the, he, you know, there's a famous clip of Trump like 
uh, mocking a handicapped person going like, uh, 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 like this, and Trump making kissy faces. Uh, Trump has a, a wild um, range of expressions, which makes it really harder to get a bead on, you know, what he looks like. You know, there's a, there's a lot of shit going on. Is he apparently has a sun lamp or something where his most of his face is one color and the area around his eyes is. A, What's your point? The point is that yeah, he doesn't and he doesn't look like he's aging in office as much as other presidents have, and I'd argue it's because. Why he's, is that a bad thing, Rick? Oh, I'd argue. Okay, then, but thank you. Uh, maybe because like he doesn't care as much. And the, 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 I, the, I the, knew there'd be a bad reason. All right. Well, no. Well, you asked for it, so there you go. It, you know, it's just you know that maybe the mantle of the office is doesn't weigh on him as heavily as on other presidents. Well, being of a scientific mind, unlike Rick, I uh, I go with Occam's razor, and that is that he was a leader of many corporations. He's been uh, a manager his whole life. He's hired, fired, uh, made deals. Unlike Obama, uh, who was just a, a lawyer that got three years in the Senate where he voted now and then, uh, uh, Trump is used to being a leader. And uh, as a result, this job is not as taxing on him as it is for other people that are, were just voting in Congress. He knows that there are some things he has to worry about, uh, some things he doesn't. He knows who to fire and when. He doesn't waste time with people uh, if they're not producing. He d and the other thing is, they say America, God takes care of drunks, babies, in the U.S. of A. And I believe that. That's... A and right when we needed him, we got a president that they say works 20 hours a day. He, he does not, the guy sleeps very little. And I know this to be true. No, no, Rick, this is true. This is true. Because I've seen him do things, do speeches like at midnight. And then... 6 a.m., 7 a.m., he'll he's be... He's tweeting. He'll be, yeah, he'll be talking to somebody else. They know the times of these tweets. And, and everybody that knows him, they ask his kids. His, I've heard his son say, yeah, the guy has more energy than I do, and he's 73 years old. He's up. He, he doesn't need much sleep. He is very... The more I follow his accomplishments and his lifestyle... The more I think the man is truly brilliant and, and, a, and, a, and a volcano of energy. And so what, what America got was a man equal to the job. As far as him, uh, and, and like for example, the, the, the Congress has been, uh, Pelosi, the head of the Democrats, has been threatening him with impeachment, uh, with terrible false accusations that drive me crazy uh, that I've been hearing for the past three years. And if it was me, I would be a nervous wreck over being falsely accused of things uh, and, and the threat of impeachment behind my back when I'm trying to deal with foreign countries. I wouldn't be able to get my work done. This man knows what not to worry about. He's always one step ahead of him, and, and, and he's not afraid of him. And tomorrow, I predict, he will release a memo that will show that he didn't do anything that they can impeach him for. The Democrats will still continue because they're rats. And they because there are 30 be, ongoing be, investigations. Then, but, but this isn't one of them. This isn't one of them. They're just... They just they, Proof doesn't matter to them. All, all, you keep referring year after year to investigations of things that you've never been able to prove to me. So I don't care if the Democrats like to investigate. They, they, you have to have a crime, and so far they don't have one. So anyway, the point is, that's the reason he's not aging. 
Now, Rick wants to do something disgusting. Yes, I do. All right. I've made this offer on national TV before, but I will make it again, and I'll make it even more dangerous to me. Um, there's a congressional uh, candidate, a conservative, whose Twitter handle is Joey Salads, who went on Twitter today and said that he will have his left testicle removed if Trump is impeached. And similarly, if Trump takes a professionally administered IQ test and scores 120 or above, I will have my gigantic second toe amputated. This toe is two and three quarters inches long. And I am putting it up at risk, my magnificent toe if Trump could score 120 on an IQ test. So there, hello. Show them the toenail on the big one. Yeah, it's almost gone. Old guys get fungus nails, and uh, boy, I've got some fungus Show from here. the dorsal view. Yeah, there you go. Oh, the dorsal view. Yeah, it, it's not great. It's, it's, it's a bit bad news. Um, all right, also, like, the liberal media likes to talk about how much, um, how little is on Trump's schedule. Now, he might be awake 20 hours a day, but uh, we like to think it's him watching Fox and Friends in the morning and then tweeting about whatever they present. And I, I, we don't find that his work habits are that focused. Um, uh, and one more thing, uh, he's been involved in 4,600 lawsuits. So if you, if you want to call that leadership, I know you like to say it's because he's a billionaire and a captain of industry, but anyway, that's all I got. Yeah, uh, people get into, if, if you have a whole bunch of companies, there will be a whole bunch of lawsuits. There will be workman's comp lawsuits. There will be uh, lawsuits over copyright. Uh, so the number of lawsuits is just another deception brought up by Democrats. Oh, I wanted to ask you a question, Rick. Go ahead. Real fast. What are the greatest accomplishments of the Democrat House since they took over the House? 10, 9, no, 8, no, no. I mean, 7, all right. So like, six, I can tell you what hasn't five, happened. There's been no legislation. No, no, three, you can't talk two, over. 2, 1. Can't think of anything, huh, Rick? Gonna... Greatest accomplishments of the Democrats since they took over the all House right, so of Representatives. so there's been... Stop counting fucking down. All right, so I feel like, and I don't know this, I can't, I don't think you give credit to the House, but there's been some action in some states on gerrymandering. Um, you know, you were mad. We were editing last episode. You were, there, the, I got to say, yeah, there hasn't been a lot of action. You were mad because your mom um, can't get a, ch a, a cheap prescription for the pain pills she needs because the, there are, there's still a lot of shittiness involved with uh, medical coverage for people. So, you know, I mean, you got me. There, there's, I, I'd like, I don't know. Thank you. Subscribe to no, our No, no, hold show. on. Like, oh. you're better informed than me. Just give me a, you tell me something. None. The Democrats have accomplished virtually nothing since taking over the House. And I just was thinking about it for today, this afternoon. I thought, what oh, the I hell, do know, what the I hell do have know, they done? I do know that Moscow over. Mitch McConnell is sitting on, is refusing to bring to the floor for a vote 250 pieces of legislation passed by the Democratic House since they took over in 2017. So, I mean, yeah, you can blame the Democrats for not in the House for not accomplishing any in anything, but the Republicans in the Senate, who also have to pass legislation, it has to pass both houses, have to bear some of the blame. 250 pieces of legislation. There, there has been bipartisan support in terms of criminal reform, criminal justice reform. Yeah, so they, they, um, they found out that a lot of people are being put in jail for things that you should just have to pay a fine for uh, a lot of people that are um, which which is it's a long time coming we've needed that kind of thing so there was bipartisan support on that one um, I can't think of anything else that's been bipartisan so oh yeah 
Actually, this is kind of interesting. Both the Democrats and the Republicans have seen the light and realized that they have to control Google because Google is controlling what people, what information people are getting. Uh, the way they do that briefly is if you type in a subject that Google doesn't like, it will route you, it'll give you little suggestions as you're typing, they'll come up, everyone knows, uh, and you will get the things they want you to see. And so the Republicans are mad because they claim that Google will put up a whole bunch of things that make the Republicans look bad uh, and route people to things that make the Democrats look good. Uh, whether this is true or not isn't relevant. What I think is relevant is that the Democrats actually got the idea. They actually got wise and thought, you know, if Google can do this to the Republicans, they can do that to us too. So they're asked to be, uh, they're now thinking about either breaking up Google, which, you know, is, is unlikely, or figuring out some way of making their search engines neutral. And there are a host of issues there. The main issue that it boils down to is this. Is Google a publisher? In which case it has a point of view. Or is it like the phone book where we're, it's completely neutral? You have a business or a name you get in the phone book. And there, the implications are these. If they say they're like the phone book, what that means is they can't then route you to an issue they like because they're then editor, the edi edit, editing. Edit. They're editorializing, they're editing. If they're editing, then you can sue them. You can say, hey, I said that I was for Trump. I had a big article. You routed people away from me. And you say you're as neutral as the phone book. This is against your laws, your bylaws, so you're committing fraud. And I can sue you because you've got your hand on the, on the, your thumb on the scale. So that's the second way that the, the two parties are, bi, are bipartisan. Right. Do you have anything else to say? Because yeah. it's really All right. All right. Right. Last thing. Last thing I hope is. Um, Right now, the key to getting anything done is owning both houses of, of Congress and the presidency. And that doesn't happen all the time. And when it does, it, it's usually, it's not great for the country. Um, the Republicans um, owned all three houses, all, both houses and the presidency for the first two years. And, you know, you got to think, you got the corporate tax cut through, which you could argue, you know, I mean, you guys really like it, and I could argue that it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, but a better thing would be to have more centrist politicians, um, which we, you know, there are very few centrist politicians um, left because of, of, largely because of gerrymandering. And we can hope that in the future, you know, the that the parties won't, and the voters won't be so polarized. Um, and that's it. For All right, me. wait, I have a correction. So um, I, I, I have to have, we have to have intellectual integrity on the show. If we say something that isn't quite true, I should correct it. Last week I said that Elizabeth Warren wanted to eliminate all fossil fuels in the next 20 years and go to just renewables. Now, it turns out that that was a statement made by Kamala Harris. I looked up Elizabeth Warren's policy on oil, uh, fossil fuels. It turns out she's pretty much against fossil fuels. She didn't say it as clearly as Kamala Harris, but everything I've read about her is just over and over again, one quote after another about how we have to wind down fossil fuels. 
I also said that Elizabeth Warren was against nuclear power, and I maintain that that is true. So, uh, slight correction, and what I'd like to tell people is the Warren is a front runner. Go to her website. Keep listening to her speeches. She's going to be. Uh, she's going to want to wind down fossil fuel. She's going to be against nuclear power. I've got a good reason, a conservative reason, to wind down fossil fuel. And that is that we want to have fossil fuel into the far future. When I was growing up, our family car, a Vista Cruiser station wagon, got nine miles a gallon. Nine fucking miles a gallon. It was a fucking boat. We all drove boats. Um, and so we burned up doing stupid shit, so much fossil fuel in the first 150 years of fossil fuel, that now maybe we'll keep coming up with better and better ways to, 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 to pump it out of the earth, which seems to be what's happening. But, you know, we don't want to, we want to get more and more efficient. With regard, there will always be applications for fo where fossil fuel is the most reasonable shit to use, I assume. You know, maybe those will become less and less, certainly a smaller and smaller percentage, but we just don't want to be out of fossil fuel. We don't, we want to become more efficient. We want to develop alternative means. And one reason is so we can keep having fossil fuel 500 years from now for the shit where it makes sense to have fossil fuel. What? All right. Well, I would just like to say that uh, France, uh, gets about, France and Sweden get between 50% and two-thirds of their energy from nuclear power. So the only viable alternative to fossil fuel is nuclear power, and the Democrats are all against it. Not the so, only. No, it is the only, because wind power is useless. Why? And why? Because it's, it produces hundredth, I mean, it, no, like, of, of, like the, of the power One of the that, Midwestern that, states, that like uh, not one of the Farm Belt states, like Iowa, gets a third of its power from, I think, wind plus solar, or maybe just wind. I mean, it's, no, it's not using... Wind, wind power is incredibly inefficient. It takes up massive amounts of territory, and they've killed billions of birds. I mean, it if is you care about killing. the environment, it, it is those brutal. big, huge windmills wipe out eagles and condors. So um, it's wind power. Anybody watching this, uh, please, just, just get over it with the wind power. It's never going to work. It's, it'll never replace uh, uh, fossil fuel. Solar power is a little better. Um, they still haven't quite gotten the bugs out of it yet. But they're It'll getting, be, it's getting to the point yeah, where but, it's but, less expensive but, but and lots you, of applications. As you for, say yourself, when the market ha when it's ready, the market will make it work. Until then, we don't need to worry. We we can't push one over the other. Now you are signaling to me. What is your signal? PayPal. Oh yeah, yeah. Give us money, Lance versus Rick at gmail.com. Now there... wait a minute, wait. Somebody said to us that he wasn't sure if he had the right email. So I'm going to tell you this. The email is at the end of the show, and the directions are you go to PayPal and you write L-A-N-C-E-V-S-R-I-C-K, the at symbol, gmail.com. So it's not the whole word versus, it's just VS, and uh, it'll be at the end of the show. You can go to it. Uh, even a dollar a month makes a difference to us. Now, I just want to say that um, we, we really appreciate it. It's not free to do this, and uh, we're not asking for the moon. Even even five bucks makes a difference to us because it's just the three of us and we're all we're all uh, in need of money. So that's Sorry, all Bryce, I have to you're, say. You're, you're a guest star. Yeah. Oh, all good. right. Thank you very right, well, much. One more thing, though. Every form of energy, fossil fuel, wind, solar. I don't know about coal. If coal is redeemable, needs 
refining and tweaking nuclear. Everything can be improved and will be. That's all right. All right. Bye. Good job.